Hey there, I'm John, and welcome to Hand Tool Homeschool, where we are bringing homeschool dads and kids together, one woodworking project at a time. And today, I want to talk to you about an awesome benchtop appliance, as they call it in Hand Tool World. And it is a shooting board. So, a shooting board is something that I think is a necessity in the shop. And I want to talk to you about my experiences with it, how to make one, and how it's going to benefit you. All right, so let's go check out the video, and I'm going to show you everything you need to know today. All right, let's go. All right, first things first, what is a shooting board? Well, it's a simple appliance that you make, or simple jig, however you want to term that. But this board here simply has a base. It's made of three pieces, actually four. You've got your, your wide base on the bottom, and then you've got this narrower piece here that sits on top. You've got this cross piece of wood here and then on the bottom to attach to your vise you've got this piece of wood and it allows you to secure this in the vise so it doesn't move. And what this does is it allows you to place a board like this and it's going to be straight up against this piece right here and it's 90 degrees. It's a perfect 90 degrees to this wall to this edge of the board this is a perfect 90 so if I put my combination square right here it's going to be a perfect 90 degree and that's what you want because this shooting board is made to help you true up the end of a board and what do I mean by true it up I mean I want it to be a perfect 90 degrees on the end grain of your board and how's that going to happen well when you place it here and hold it you're going to take your plane and you're going to slide it like this on the shooting board. And it's going to shave the end grain. And I'll explain to you in a few minutes when I do a close-up why we use the plane like this and how it accomplishes this. But just in a short um, couple words here, that's how it works. And I'll go ahead and get a closer-up shot now so you can see exactly how this works. Okay, so here we have the shooting board. And I'm going to go ahead and put this in the vise. And I'm going to, that's going to allow me that little piece of wood right there attached to the bottom allows me to secure it so that it doesn't move on me. Now, what this is going to look like, I'm going to go ahead and put, this is the piece of board that I want to be square. Sometimes when you make a saw cut, um, you may not have a perfect 90 degree cut and that's what you want. Uh, sometimes you may just want to clean up the end grain. Now you can see here, that's pretty cleaned up. It looks pretty good. And that's been on the shooting board already. But what if it didn't? Well, we could clean it up really simple this way. So what you do, and this is just giving you another angle, but what you do is you press that. Just You don't have to, you don't have to press it really hard into this because this is nice and secured with these three screws. But you just press this here into the wall here. Keep it nice and tight. And then you run your plane. Let me get a little different angle here. I'll give you a couple different angles, but you're going to run your plane and you're going to feed the piece of wood here just ever so slightly. You're going to use your fingers to be pushing, and I'll exaggerate the action here, but you're, you're pushing this board across like this as you're shaving it with the plane. And that's going to just, I mean, it's going to ever so slightly hang over the edge and get shaved. And what happens is, this board here keeps this supported. These end grain fibers, let me see if I can show you better and explain. These end grain fibers on the very end, if you did not have this supported and you took the plane off the edge, it would break this wood. It would just snap it right off because these fibers are running this way. They're running like up at the camera at you the way you're looking right now. They're not running this way. So when they're, when they're going up like this, the fibers, you're going against that with the plane. And it's just going to, like, imagine like straws, a bunch of straws coming up at you, drinking straws. If you were to just go across them, it would snap them and break them. And that's what would happen with that ingrained fiber right there. But because we're going to place that against this piece of wood right here, it's going to keep it from splitting off and cracking. So simply this tool is just a way to shave the end grain and get you a perfect 90 degree 
true end. And when, what that's going to do is it's going to allow you to, you know, butt other boards up against or do dovetails later on. And when you do that, you're going to have perfect ends and they're going to meet. If you don't do that or you try to join other boards at the ends in some fashion, it's not going to line up and it's not going to look good. It's not going to work out. So having true 90 degrees is important on your end grain. Okay, so this is kind of what it looks like. And I'm just feeding it really slow. And I'm going to show you right now. I've got some shavings. These are end grain shavings, and that's what you want to see. You do not want to see dust. If you're seeing a bunch of dust, your blade is probably not sharp enough. But in this case, let me shake these out. You can see I've got nice little shavings there. It took me a little while to figure this out, and once I did, it was uh, golden because, yeah, I couldn't get shavings. All I had was dust, and that's not what you want. So anyhow, there's one angle. I'm going to get a couple different angles for you so you can see this in action better. So let me switch views. Okay, so maybe you can get just a different look at things here. But again, I'm just placing this against that 90 or that board going across. I don't know what you call that. I can't remember. I'm sure there's a name for it. It's better than that board going across, but you get the idea. You're going uh, against the board that's perpendicular to this edge. And you're just slowly feeding it and sliding it, making sure the whole time to keep pressure all the way. You don't want the board to get any kind of tilt to it. And generally it doesn't, as long as this edge is nice and parallel. But you're simply feeding it, shaving the end grain off. You can't see on this side, but I'm getting all kinds of shavings. And there's also shavings falling out over here on the base. But one thing I wanted to show you too, I wanted to mention, what this shooting board helps you do when, it's, when it helps you get the 90 degree in, they call it squaring it up. If you check it, it's nice and square on the end. And then also, it's nice and square all the way down. So it squares it this way and it squares it this way. And that's what you want. Okay, let me see if I can get a couple more views. Okay, let me see if I can give you a final angle here to see this at work. So once again, I'm just going to run the shooting board here. Feeding it ever so slightly. And man, I am getting awesome shavings in there. Let's see if I can get those out. Yeah. So I got shavings there and I've got some that have come out on the board. One thing I want to talk to you about really quick is that you don't want to have your plain iron sticking way out from the bottom. You want it really, really shallow. I can't, you can't see that right now here, but you want it very shallow. You want to take shallow slices, shallow cuts on that end grain. If you are too aggressive with the iron, have it too far out, it's just going to chunk it and going to chip it. It's not going to work well. So that's what you're looking for. Okay, so that's a quick look at a shooting board. I do want to go over a couple things, and I felt like I kind of went fast in the video, so I'm going to take a breath and just calm down for a second. Um, I, my kids are running crazy upstairs and it's bedtime, and so I apologize if I talked a little fast, but I'm gonna slow it down here and bring it all in and tell you what I think about shooting boards, uh, my experience. So I'm looking around right now, sorry if I'm moving, let me pick up something real quick here. I started out making a shooting board um, it's a version that Paul Sellers makes online and it looks like this. It's quite a bit different and it uses what a wedge style uh, piece and this isn't the right one but the idea is is that you can put this wedge in here and you can do the same thing I was showing you with the shooting board I have so it does the 90 degree angle 
and it trues up the end of the board. But also you have these angled 45 degree angles where you can put in a, put in a wedge and it, and it helps you to do a 45 degree angle so that you could maybe do picture frames or something of that nature. So I discarded that. I tried to make that shooting board twice. I could never get it adjusted right to give me the proper 90 degree end, let alone the 45. It's a great design. Paul Sellers is an amazing craftsman, but he's beyond me. And I tried it twice, very, very slow and patient and making it, and I could not get it there. It was close, but it was always off, and I just could not get it done. So maybe someday I'll revisit that design, but it put me on a quest to find a design that would work for me. Now the shooting board I showed you today is just for a square to square the end of a board. It's not for a 45. I'm going to make a separate one to show you that. It's the same concept only you're placing your your cross piece at a 45 degree angle instead. However, that's another video, but for today, just know that what I found as a beginning woodworker is that if you just keep it simple, keep the design simple, you'll get something that works. And for me, this is simple. Now, I didn't disassemble this today to show you how to make it on the video. It's very, it's pretty self-explanatory in design. And I don't want to say that like it's, you know, something that's super easy for a beginner. But it's, there's basic components. There's four pieces. There's your, I spoke about it earlier, but there's your cross piece here you need. This is the, the top piece that sits on the base, which is a little wider. This is about nine inches across on the base, about six inches across on this piece. And then you've got the little tail piece down here that you could put in the vise to hold it. That's it. And what I'm going to do in the notes in this uh, blog post, I'm going to put a uh, diagram of the dimensions and everything that shows you an exploded view of how to how this is sandwiched together put together and it's really as simple as that and I just ran screws in at just um, I used a little bit of a, di a, uh, a grid pattern and I just ran my screws in evenly and I've got what uh, let's see nine screws in from the top to the base and then three screws in here I did mess a screw up here and I had to um, replace it. Actually, when I put this piece on, it was about a, it was about one thirty second off on this end, and it made all the end grain, it made the end of the board out of whack. It wasn't plain square, so I had to take that screw out, readjust it, and put it down in. So I do want to talk about that for a minute. Sometimes you have to kind of fiddle around with with this, but you the easiest way to do this when you're this is the hardest part I think about making this shooting board. What you want to do is when these boards are cut square, you want to make sure that this edge here is square when you put your combination square up here to this. So in other words, when I place my, my square up here, both of them should be perfect 90 degrees. You want a 90 degree angle perfect. Once you have that marked, what I did was I went ahead and I didn't have this piece on yet. I went ahead and marked it across with the square. Then I lined this piece up. And before I screwed it down, I went ahead and just slid my square right up here like this. And then push, push my piece up to it. And then I drilled some pilot holes and put the screws in. So I'll write all this up in the blog. But I wanted to, this to be a quick video to introduce you to the shooting board. If you have any questions on making it, if it seems complicated in any way, just reach out to me. I can try to do my best to help you through that. But really, as long as you get, as long as you get this piece 90 degrees to this edge, it doesn't really matter about these edges or this edge. It's these two things that are the factor. The other thing I want to mention is that Sometimes you have to, on your plane, you've got this lateral adjuster back here. If you've got this style of a plane, um, this is a Stanley number five, by the way. But sometimes you just want to adjust the blade um, with the lateral adjuster. If you're not quite getting a square end, let me see if I can, let me see if I can explain this a little better. Let's say you have this, but this end here is, it's not, it's not, square all the way across. Maybe it's skewed or angled. 
sometimes just adjusting this lateral lever back here, it makes the plane blade change direction. So it will allow you to square that up. You just have to fiddle around with the settings. And it took me a little while to learn that. But some folks say that the plane has the actually, like the sidewalls of the plane where you rest it, that they actually have to be square to the bottom. So in other words, when you put your square on, you would have to make sure that it's perfect 90 degrees from the wing over here, the side, and the bottom. But I don't think that's the case, not in my experience, not in what I've read. You can actually just use the lateral adjuster and it'll work out. So pretty simple. Um, it does take fiddling around with a bit, especially when you're new. But I would certainly try this design over using some kind of adjustable wedge. This took forever to make. I made it by hand, all these grooves and stuff. And it just, it, it really was hard to deal with after spending so much time on making two of them and not getting them to work. So in my opinion, simple is better. It's easier and it works well. And you're going to be happy. The, one of the projects coming up is a box I'm going to make and it makes things so easy to have everything nice and flush when you put your boards together. So anyhow, uh, one last final thought on the plane. I'm using a number five tonight, but you can use nearly any plane unless it's like a shoulder or a rabbit plane, but you can use a number four and, and you know, it's your, really your choice. But I like the number five in my experience. It's got a little more weight to it. It seems to push through the the board easier through the end grain easier the, num the number one important thing is that you have a sharp 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 blade that's really it but i still like the number five the best i've used a number four i started with it it's i like it it's fine if that's what you have go with it but if you can find a cheap number five hey just use that dedicated as a shooting board plane and you're good to go uh, let's see if there's anything else i can mention okay so let's see if i can give you a better view but one thing I wanted to show you is that if you have your piece that you want to shave the end grain on, you want to true it up, it needs to be shorter than your cross piece here. If it sticks above, chances are that your plane blade isn't going to be wide enough to shave it. And if your plane blade is wide enough to shave it, um, the issue you're going to run into here is if it's sitting above, then the wood's not supported and you're going to have potential for it to crack and splinter off. So you want, you want this piece to be tall enough, and mine is about an inch tall right here. So generally, actually it's a little over an inch, so I can go up to an inch thick stock, and it's going to be just fine. But yeah, you definitely want this piece taller than the stock you're working with. So I hope I explained this pretty well. I hope I didn't talk too fast. I was under a little pressure to get this video done. And also I know that I have limited storage space while shooting it, but that's another story. Anyway, I hope that this helps you understand what a shooting board is and why it would benefit you in your shop. Um, another way, I think I've shown this, I know I've shown this in a couple videos previous. If you don't use a shooting board, what you end up doing is, if you put a board in your vise, and I'll just show you this, I'm not up close, but you'll get the idea here. You can plane it across like this, but you have to stop short of this end. If you go all the way through, again, it's gonna crack that unsupported wood fiber straight off, and you're gonna crack your wood. It's not gonna be good, and actually, I demonstrated this because I messed up in the candy dispenser video, and I showed what that looked like. Uh, when I did that. So if you're going to play in freehand and you're not going to use a shooting board, you have to go at it and kind of swipe off before you get to the end. Then you're going to flip it around and then you're going to come from the other direction. You know, But that's a, that is a skill that you want to learn. You want to develop that. The issue is it takes a little while to develop it. And sometimes on narrower pieces like this, it's really tough because you don't have much of a runway when you're, when you're uh, shaving. So I think it's just an awesome idea to get a shooting board. Once you get it together, once you get it adjusted and you learn how to use it, it's going to make life so much easier 
and your boards are going to be trued up exactly to 90 degrees, which is what you want. So hopefully that helps you out. And hopefully I didn't talk too fast. And I hope you find this video, I'm saying hope a lot. I hope you find this video useful. I'm so excited that you took the time to watch this today. If you wouldn't mind, if you find this video um, valuable and that you really enjoyed it, I hope you wouldn't mind it. Uh, just share it out there to folks that you know. And uh, also you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. That would be awesome. Or you can go over to www.handtoolhomeschool.com and subscribe over there and get a cool little nifty uh, core essential tools guide that will help guide you through the tools that you can um, use to get started in hand tool woodworking. So I think that's a wrap for today. And until next time, always remember life's most important order. Love God, love each other, and woodwork. All right, until next time, take care and God bless.